Hi, y'all all. Welcome Moon Graffon Show. Great to have you with us already uh, Friday Eve. Payday for Brandon, so that's why he's excited. Comes early today. You know, I, f- I almost forgot it. If I get caught in that weather today, you, I may not be, I may not be back to pay you. It was not that bad this morning, Moon. <laughs> Actually, it was not. You remember when I got here, it was raining? Yeah. Before I got out the truck, it stopped raining. And I told Rob, I said, I just sat there. He said, what were you doing in the truck? I said, I said, Lord, let this rain stop so I don't get none on my natural. <laughs> So when I walked in, he goes, the rain stopped. I said, let me tell you why. <laughs> All right, folks, great to have you with us. And uh, we're honored to have the Speaker of the House, a guy who deserves a lot of praise uh, for what work they tried to get accomplished in, in Baton Rouge. And there were some things they accomplished. Of course, uh, Taylor Byra joins us, Representative Byra, who is the Speaker of the House in Baton Rouge. First of all, good morning. Good morning. Happy to be here. Oh, man, glad to have you. First of all, I just, you know, Brandon was telling you, before he got in, thanks for what you did. And I just want to say it. And, and by the way, people are free to call in if they want to uh, ask you a question or, or, or thank you. I thought what y'all did in Baton Rouge and tried to accomplish was a, a hell of a job. I think the, I think the, the group that stayed together, I know you had some people that left and up going with the Democrats and voting that way, but y'all stayed together to the end. It caused a special session. But y'all tried to do what was right, and, uh, Mr. Barra. And, and I want to say thank you personally on the air because really – Y'all were trying to do something right and different. Now, if you read the press, that's not what they said. But just your comments on that, because you really, your delegation really did a good job. Well, and and my compliments to them. And before I, before I get into talking about them, thanks thanks to you and and your listeners, because I tell you, when you when you follow the mainstream press, um, the conservative work that we tried to do over the last eighteen months doesn't make it to the mainstream press very often. So we appreciate you and your listeners and the opportunity to share that. By the way, it makes it, but it makes it with a big twist. Oh, that is true. Uh, no doubt. But anyway, y'all think, but, I, y'all really did a great job. And it, it, maybe we didn't win the battle, but I'm hoping that we're going to win the war. And what I mean that is the political war. Well, and, and I will tell you, the, uh, and he's been on the show several times, Lance Harris, the, the uh, chairman of our Republican delegation on the House side, Cameron Henry, my appropriations chair, Neil Abramson, my Ways and Means chair. What we have been through um, for the last 18 months, starting back to the first special right after everyone was elected last January, um, it has been an incredible amount of work, you know, both on, you know, tax proposals, tax reform, budget reform. It has been an enormous amount of work, and particularly those two committees, in addition to, to many of our other committees, um, our Republican group has been able to stick together and and do some work. I mean, we, we're hoping to change the conversation in Baton Rouge. I think we have done that. Um, we We tend to focus on the expense side of the ledger and and we're going to continue to they focus that don't even worry about that, that y'all worry about the spending there are a lot of them now that could care less what the spending is just keep sending the dollars that is correct and and it will be a battle that continues well into january and into next year no right. doubt well, no doubt about it speaker of the house uh taylor byros joining us he's going to be with us for the for the whole hour uh i, I want you to back up i want to get to the press but before we do that take us through the regular session before you got in a special session there was a lot of flurry at the end. The press, once again, wrote lack of leadership. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. But all the stuff they were writing weren't true. Take us through the last couple of days because I don't think anybody knows what was going on. They made it sound like you guys stopped in from voting for the budget, and that's just not true. What happened right there at the end? Well, and, and bear with me as I take you back yeah, to the to the first the first special session of this year, which was back in February, which seems like a lifetime ago at this point, but. Um, two two and a half weeks in February that we spent there to close the gap um, that that ends next week, June thirtieth. Um, as you remember, it became an argument about how much of the rainy day fund we use, and you had you know the press and everybody screaming, "What's the rainy day fund for? If it's not for a rainy day, we kept saying you don't need to use the one-time rainy day." Money. Correct. That was criticized under Jindal for using one time money. And and if you don't need to go there by shaving the budget again, shaving these are not catastrophic cuts. No. You remember that argument. We finished that special session, again, compromising to using $99 million rather than $120 million of the of the rainy day. Of one-time money. That's correct. <laughs> that session ended on February 22nd. His executive budget, the administrator's executive budget, was due to the Appropriations Committee two days later, on the 24th, on our normal calendar before the regular session started. We, we cut agencies. We used the rainy day fund. We started using a new budget number for every agency that we call the March 1 number after the special session cuts and adjustments were made. They present an executive budget on February 24th, which is what we're going to use in this regular session that we just finished with most of those cuts re- reinstated 
and 400 million more of a wish list of departments and replacement vehicles and that type of thing. So 600 million more dollars of requests were in that executive budget than what we had finished two days before on wow. February 22nd. So wow. of course the appropriations committee s- starts with, first of all, we're going to go back to the March 1 number and take the cuts away. Second is we're not going to be able to honor 400 million worth of new requests, which in, in budget language in Baton Rouge, we call the continuation budget. What most governors budget for increased in benefits and increased in retirement, those kinds of things. Well, when you do, when you're doing that 400 million at a time every year, there is no way revenue keeps up with that clip. We would be adjusting revenue every 12 months to keep up with that. And that's the part of a continuation budget that gets kind of lost in the shuffle. And, and when you, when you explain that to members and you show it on a graph that there is no revenue bucket that we can keep up with that kind of growth from year to year. So, I mean, we started that regular session knowing that we were going to be off 600 million of what his request was and that we were probably going to work through the session coming up with a much smaller number on the spending side. Knowing that there were bills going to be out there for what they called reform and you know, their definition of reform is, <laughs> is anything that's got a billion dollars tied to it. You know, when you pass a bill that's revenue neutral, they don't, they don't, they don't pay attention to it. So, you know, you, we, we had that battle during the session. We have Republican members that put some bills out there and the name of reform did an incredible amount of work, flat tax ideas, all kinds of ideas. So, you know, when the press considers to, to criticize us on the Republicans came with no plan, the plan was spend less money. By the time you get there, you cut that fiscal cliff in but half what, if you what, spend but, less but, money. But wouldn't it basically stand still with a few mandates like Absolutely. you were talking about? So that was the plan. And I used to laugh because Edwards would say they don't have a plan. Darden would say they don't have a plan. And, of course, Tyler Bridges, Jim Beam, and the rest of them would pile on and say well, they don't have a plan. Correct. Without doing any work, without looking at it. And it was a plan on the table, and I thought it was a heck of a plan. And when we got the agencies before the Appropriations Committee at the beginning of the, spe- of the, of the regular session, the question was asked because we had a member that would ask every department the same question. If we gave you what you finished with on March 1 last year, can you live on spending what you spent effective March 1? The majority of those agencies, with the exception of one or two, said absolutely. If it's wow. not a cut and I live with what you gave me last year, I can do it. Well, you know, that changed as the administration got to those department heads and said, no, that wasn't the right answer. <laughs> so, no, you know, as, right. as time went on, they, they kind of crawfished on that, on that position. So our, our feeling all along was a standstill plus a few mandates, you know, what we have to do with the MFP and those kinds of things. So there was going to be an $80 million increase, but we said standstill plus 80 million. Let's start there, which by calculation, is about 97.5% of what the REC estimates we have to spend next year. Reasonable number, knew that may not be where we'd finish, but it was certainly a starting point that would cut the fiscal cliff in half. And, you know, when, when, you, when you're talking about a $1.2 million fiscal cliff, potentially higher than that by the time we get to January, you take down that, that down to $600 million, that's a manageable number wow. um, Absolutely. to work with. Absolutely. Taylor Barra, Speaker of the House, right here in Great state of Louisiana talking about kind of what went on. Yeah, there was a there was a, a deal at the end that they accuse you and the, and the leadership of not allowing them to vote for the budget. We wouldn't have did it, but that was their spin. What really happened? That's correct. Well, back back to the percentage when we when we sent the bill to the Senate, which I, I need to mention was on May the fourth. Um, we didn't get back till after Memorial Day weekend from the Senate on the on the on the last week of the yeah. session. Um, of course, we didn't agree with the changes they made because they didn't, they, not only did they not want to spend 97 and a half, they wanted to spend the 400 of what REC estimates, which we know will be adjusted, um, before the year's yeah, over. The history shows that. Well, July 1 hadn't got here yet and we've already adjusted it down with $27 million. So wow. history's already proven itself. Um, but when we get to that last week, of course, we rejected the amendments, which throws the budget bill into a conference committee. Three members of the House, three members of the Senate try to work through the differences. Um, we started those meetings with, with President Lario and his, his folks on, we got the bill back on Sunday. We started on Monday. We immediately took $50 million and put it back on the table and said, we'll go from 97 and a half to 98.2. Let's start there. Can y'all live with that? It's 150 million worth of cuts rather than 200. That lasted about a half a day. We got it back saying, no, not doing that. Move to Tuesday morning. 
Put a hundred million on the table. Let's talk about that. You know, that's one percent. So y'all shade. doing the negotiating. Y'all the ones giving in, right, Taylor? I, 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 I can't. I can't tell you how many times I walked over to the Senate. Let me say that. <laughs> but y'all, were, they accused y'all of not negotiating, not oh, doing the work a deal. Y'all were the ones trying to work the deal out. Oh, in fact, at some point we were negotiating against ourselves. We kept putting more money on the table. And they kept saying, no, until we all agree to spend 100 percent, we're not doing this. We're not cutting anything. And that was the message from the administration from the beginning. So we went from Monday to Tuesday to Wednesday. Um, we get to the last day of session. I, I probably walked over to the Senate five or six times during the day with with President Alario, with the chairman of his finance committee, Eric LaFleur, trying to find some meat in the middle that, that seemed reasonable. And, and really, by about, you know, three thirty or four o'clock. We realize the governor won't budge, the Senate won't budge. We're we're, and y'all were we're, budging. we're putting everything but fifty million dollars on the table, and they still won't bite on that. So bite, bite. that's kind of where it stopped. Now, when you get to the end, which we'll talk about, I know Let me you want to talk a break. about. Let okay. me take a break. Let me take a break. Come back and talk about the end. We got this thing's gonna go by quick. I do want to give you a chance to uh, challenge some of the stuff that the press did, especially your home newspaper right here. With their ignorance editorial, he needs to get out of the way. He's not leading. What a bunch of dummies! But we'll get that and let you comment on that and Bridges and some of the stuff they've said. We've got all that coming up, folks. Speaking of the house, he's in the house, Taylor Bauer. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Hi, y'all. Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show. Great to have you with us. Friday Eve already, a rainy Friday Eve. I can promise you that. That's going to be pretty much the whole day all over the state, really the next day or two. All right, Taylor Bauer. He is the Speaker of the House in the great state of Louisiana. He's doing a heck of a job, and him and his leadership – Tried to hold everything in place. Had a few people that I, I, I felt like they shouldn't have left y'all. They should have stuck with y'all. All right. I want to go back. Last day of the session. You know, you got this negotiating going back and forth. And uh, But there was a big, if you read, if I read a Tyler Bridges article, Stephanie Grace, Alani Keller. By the way, Stephanie Grace and Alani Keller don't even go to the, they don't even go to the deal, dude. Don't see them very often in the building. By the way, I've been accused of the same thing and I laugh at them. I said, I don't need no, I got plenty of help. <laughs> but, but they, but. And Jim Beam, and I can go on and on with the people, they wrote a different story that Barra and them leadership failed us. I mean, y'all got beat up because the session ended the way it ended. But but talk about that last time. Uh, absolutely. And and as we talked in the last segment, um, with the negotiations going on um, pretty much all day um, on Thursday, which had started on Monday, when you get to that last day and it hits about 4 o'clock and we realize the governor and the Senate are not budging on cutting anything out of the budget. I want us to go back again. Y'all are giving in. Y'all are budgeting. Y'all are trying to make, and they accuse y'all of not wanting to do anything. Exactly. So we get to that point, and, you know, 4.15, I walk back to the House, um, met with my Republican group, and said, look, I I just don't know that we get there. It looks like we will regrettably head into a special session. We have negotiated everything. We have put everything on the table. They don't want to cut a dollar. So we kind of left it at that. Well, 5.20, 5.30, we're required to adjourn by 6 o'clock. Speaker Pro Tem Leger comes with this sheet of paper, which looked like a, a a makeshift conference committee report, which when we have a conference and both sides have agreed, two, sign it. two members from the Senate have to sign, two members from the House have to sign. Well, the one he's given to me looks like a conference committee report that I have not seen. Now, keep in mind, House Bill 1, the budget bill, is a House bill. Our staff prepares the conference committee report. We we include what we have objected to, send it over to the Senate, see if they agree, and we we, we merge the conference committee report. So you knew something was funny Correct. right there. So immediately I'm looking at this saying I'm on the conference committee and I've never seen this. What is this? Well, it's a conference committee report prepared by the Senate staff on a House bill, which allowable but highly unusual. You know, Butch Spear, who's been my our clerk for, you know, 25-plus years, Looks at it and said, "This is this is unusual. We don't usually do conference committee reports this way." And there's only one signature from the House, which was the the Democrat on our conference committee report. So he he ruled it that you know unofficial. It's not a document that the House said we made copies for everybody, spin it around because Speaker Pro Tem Leger wanted to go to the mic and present the conference committee report. Let him do it. I said, "Look, if you make a motion to accept it, I'm going to likely rule that it's a an inappropriate." motion since it's a conference committee report done in the Senate side. And I knew at that point what was about to happen because he went to the mic. Senators are pouring into the house chamber. It was, yeah, it few, was, I heard a few F bombs. It, 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 it was staging to be a, a, a showdown for the last 15 minutes. And I decided then make your motion. We're going to go through this exercise, but on house bill one, the budget bill for the state of Louisiana, that I think this body needs to debate till the 11th hour when we can, 
There is no way I'm agreeing to a conference committee report that we have worked on since Monday that is prepared in the Senate, that is fully loaded, spending every dollar of the REC estimate, and we're going to vote on that in the last eight minutes of the session. Not going to happen in my body. I'm not going to put my body through that. So I had pretty much made that decision at 545. It was just getting through objections to the motion, and I had somebody else do a substitute motion to carry us to 6 o'clock. Just to, just to give you the point, three days later, last Wednesday, when we hear it in the special session, which was basically the same version, some differences in what had been presented, um, we debated that bill for five and a half hours on the House floor. Wow. Wow. And, and well, that was something. Good. That's good. Correct. And that's something they wanted to, to, to present to us in the last 15 minutes, something unorthodox coming from the Senate. I wasn't going to put my body I, I, through I, that. I'm going to put you on the spot. One thing. Don't you think what they did was deceptive? Well, and it was I mean, a, very deceptive uh, in a way to try to get this done where you almost didn't even know what they were doing. Correct. Well, the, the pressure was that if the motion passed to have the bill heard, the conference committee report heard, and they got 53 votes, that they would back myself and my appropriations chairman, Ken Henry, into the corner that one of us needed to sign the conference committee report because that apparently was going to be the will of the body. Well, I said, I'm not sure, I'm not sure I can measure the will of the body in seven minutes. And, and neither one of us assigned this conference committee report that came over as an unofficial document. But when they did that, the press hit the fan, how y'all didn't allow it. I read it just, I think yesterday or Sunday. If they would allow that, happened right at the end. We wouldn't have had a special session, but you would have allowed something that's really, as Butch Spear says, is not germane. That's not the way we do things. That's not how we do it. And, 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 and especially, that was a slick move by them, by the especially way. on House Bill 1. I mean, if you were talking another bill on, you know, what, 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 you know, what, what color the sign needs to be, that'd be one thing. But when you're talking about the, the budget for the state of Louisiana, um, knowing that we had debated it and, and negotiated with both um, for hours, it was just, it was disappointing to have it presented that way. I'm just, t- from my perspective, it was a slick move by them. But thank God for you and your leadership because you caught it. You got a ruling for Bush. That's not how we do it. They were trying to get it done because they just wanted Absolutely. something voted, and they wanted their version voted in. Maybe they got their version voted in, but y'all were smart enough to say, "Hold up, just a second. But y'all took all the heat. When we get back, I want to ask you a little bit about the press and what they've done to you and the Republicans. By the way, not being fair at all. But I want you to uh, be able to respond to that, that, the REC, and the sales tax, DOTD, you know, with the gas Absolutely. tax. Let's talk a little bit about it. We'll try to squeeze all that in. Tell him about Rob. Speak of the House. He's my guest. He's in house. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. I could, though. Hi, y'all. Hi, y'all. All. Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show. Great to have you with us. Hickson has a hotline, 844-766-6607. If you'd like to visit with... Uh, Taylor Barra, of course, Representative Barra in New Iberia area. He became Speaker of the House. And, uh, and once again, I want to thank you. I think what y'all have done, uh, totally opposite of what the press is trying to portray, was really big in my book. Y'all trying to change the state and do something different with our finances. Uh, we can only handle so many taxes. I don't think, I don't think, have you, when you ran for office, did anybody say, Taylor, I'll vote for you if you go raise taxes. If you'll take more of my income away, I will vote for you. Please take please take another 5% of my income. You ever had anybody walk up to you and tell you that? Uh, th- never. No. <laughs> I bet you Democrats <laughs> never had anybody say, hey, look, I got too much money in my pocket. Would you take some? That's correct. Okay. Uh, never happens. Well, uh. let's let's flip this. The press, and I, and I think uh, I, I want to get your opinion. Daily advertiser called for you. Uh, lack of leadership, you need to go, which, by the way, they put that up on social media. They got blasted. They came back on Sunday and did the same thing. But And then the advocate and people on the floor were taking that and running around. Say, see, he's not a leadership because there's also talk of a coup against you. And, and that's played by the press as well. Uh, Tyler Bridges, Jim Beam, the advocate, Stephanie Grace, who never goes there, Danny Keller, who never goes there. Uh, are your comments on that? Because I think... They have one side of this. It's like we with Bell Edwards. Anybody gets in the way, we're going to mow them down. And we want Bell Edwards reelected. D.C. Press, Washington, D.C. Press has moved into Louisiana. They're picking sides, and that's what they stand with. I just think it's been totally unfair to you. Well, and, and I will tell you topic by topic. I mean, the, the, the Daily Advertiser was geared around our failure to pass the fuel tax, which, you know, from the beginning of the session, we knew was going to be a, a tough vote all the way around. Um, you know, the public's response to it, the surveys that were done by members in their districts. I mean, it was loud and clear that it, it may be a tax that we eventually need to talk about one day. But, but at this today. particular time, with the recession the way it is, 
that was not going to be the, the, the year to pass Great it. Point. Great and, point. And, and, you know, one Acadiana, a lot of the business groups, the Baton Rouge Chamber, I visited with them multiple times during the session trying to give them the best read I could through the process. And it came down to that last week. And I said, look, you, you are still short on 70 votes. We have, we have twisted this every way we can. The votes are not there. So I think when Representative Carter went to the mic, he knew he didn't have the votes and wisely pulled the bill. We're going to go down a path of looking at how we spend money first and then where we think there is an appropriate exemption or credit or tax at the end of the day, we'll evaluate that. But until you clean up the other side of the ledger, the I think it's going to be tougher to get yeah. those votes passed. There's no but, doubt. But, you know, I just think it was it was very unfair what they've done to you. I think it's, it's it, matter of fact, they are they are totally off the cliff. I, we talk about what they do to Trump. They were doing the same thing to you Absolutely. for no reason. They, and they would give illogical reasons. And, and, and then they start talking about a coup and there's, there's a chance he can be gone. I don't think you were ever in trouble losing a speakership. I, I, I'm saying that. You thought you, do you think you were ever in trouble? I, you know, I, I have members, you know, panicking on given days that, you know, there might be a motion to remove the speaker kind of comments. But, but here's the thing. I, I think it was always intended to be a distraction. I mean, it's to, for us to take our eye off the ball on what we're truly working on. But at the same time, there's no doubt that, you know, I, I, whether it's me or, or the group that I'm leading that are preventing um, some of their agenda, which is no doubt the case, um, and the press will continue to be critical. It's happened since the session has ended as well. Oh, no, they have bombed you, and uh, we're doing our best to defend you because uh, they don't have it right. They don't even have everything in order. Uh, okay. they, I mean, when I read the things and the stories they say, they never give out all the information. They just pop you. You're not a leader. You're not a leader for one reason. You didn't pass taxes. Correct. I think that makes you a leader. Right. And 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 didn't let the bill at the end of the session run that was going to spend all the RC money either. You well, know, no doubt exactly. about it. You know, the press is. Uh, I just want to tell you, we did our job to. I appreciate it. Thank they, you. They were totally wrong. They're wrong now. They're going to be wrong later. They have an agenda, and it's not yours. I, and I your agree. agenda is the people's agenda. Because I got a feeling you got a lot more calls thanking you for what you did. It, it has been overwhelming, and I appreciate that. And thanks to your listeners as well. But uh, yeah, former members, it's been it's been an incredible line of support. Uh, real quick, REC. Now you remember that now. And Correct. I've been pounding on that for many years, but you remember by default. I mean, you Correct. speak it out, and you kind of run it. Uh, you've actually took the right approach to say, look, you know what? Let's not spend all the money because the REC has been wrong a lot. Absolutely. I mean, it may, maybe not their fault, maybe their fault, but they've been awful lot. And uh, can you talk a little bit about the process and, 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 and the fact that it has been so wrong for so long? Yeah. By and, the way, I'm not trying to be funny, Brent. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and I will tell you, as you as you're trying to estimate revenue, um, you know, 12 months in advance. And in our case, we're doing it 24 months in advance because we're trying to sure. project into the second year as well. Um, it, it is difficult. We have two economists, one that works for the administration, one that works for the legislative fiscal staff. That compare notes. I mean, they, they look at the, all of the indicators on employment, oil prices, you know, what we're collecting in all the different buckets of revenue. Um, it is estimates all day long. Even when we run a bill, their fiscal note estimate is what they think will happen. The problem, particularly when you're dealing with taxes, is you're gonna, you're gonna make a change in the tax this year. You can say what the numbers will do based on current information. What you don't know is taxpayer behavior will change as a result of that. If you take away an exemption, maybe they don't buy as much. Absolutely. If you change inventory, maybe they don't keep as much inventory. There's some unknown in those numbers. More the reason that no fault of the economist that you're going to have to make adjustments once you take those realities into effect. that's what y'all tried to do. Absolutely. Say, don't spend 100%. Is Correct. that not what y'all were trying well, to do? And not only that, when you're in a down cycle like Louisiana has been, you certainly don't want to take the rosier of the two estimates from the economist. You want to take the more conservative one, and that's not always been the case either. So, you know, when you when you're when you're in a growing economy and a robust economy, maybe you get a little aggressive and take the rosier picture. But what we've been through for the last 36 months, I don't think that you need to be taking the higher estimate. Okay, they've they've uh, real quick they and we'll take one quick call phone call take a break. They use the Senate budget has been used now for 10 straight years. Correct. But, but I've read the paper too, as you know. And I read the news cycles, and, and they said, gender, gender, legislature, Republican-led legislation. Every year we had mid-year budget cuts, but every year we went with the Senate budget. And the press is telling us to go with the Senate budget. They're busting your fanny, and they're busting the leadership of Republicans. They're trying to tell us, let's keep doing what we've been doing because we're right. going to have mid-year budget cuts. Now, one other thing, and I'll let you wrap up this. We based the budget 
on $51 a, a barrel oil. And it brings in, every dollar brings in about $12 million a year. Correct. But when they made that, it was $44. Now I think it's 42 or 43 So what kind of common sense is that? I'm just asking you a question. Exactly. And, and it is those. And again, that's, that's one, one bucket of about 13. And when you, when you, when corporate collections are down or personal collections are down, I mean, we still have 25,000 people in Louisiana out of work. I mean, you, 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 you have a lot of withholding that's not being done. You have all these bucket of revenues that need to be taken into consideration. But just oil alone, if that lasts for seven or eight months at that depressed price, you're talking a fifty, sixty, ninety million dollar adjustment, real quick. Once again, based on what? Absolutely. We took a false number that the press says we should take the false number. Fifty-one dollars is not reality right now. That is correct. And you, and what I'm reading, I'm going. That might not be reality for for a while. Well, and, and look, July one's not here, and we've already adjusted the estimate for the for next year down twenty seven million. So we we're already heading in that direction. Put that headset right. on, Brandon. You got it. Uh, let me tell you what. Give me the back of that real quick. I'm sorry. Got it. Now you see this thing right here. That's that's gonna be your high or low. If it's too high, or too low, you do it. One. I'm good. And by the way, the calls have to be fairly quick. Uh, uh, let's go. Joy and Abbeville, question or comment for the speaker of the house. Hey, good morning, gentlemen. As one of Moon's esteemed 120 listeners, speak of our, uh, thank you for your time. My question to you is, as a private citizen, as a former business owner, as an employee of a company, all of the industries around here have taken cuts in pay. They've, you know, decreased salaries. They've cut back on employees. When are we going to hear that from the state of Louisiana's government, like Oklahoma did? They took an across-the-board 10% cut the state budget. Everybody's decreasing their spending by 10%, and we're going to tighten our belts and just live with it. We don't hear that from the state of Louisiana. When is that going to happen? Well, thank you for your call, and I will tell you, you will continue to hear it from the, the House Republicans. Um, we just get muffled pretty quick when, with, with that regard. But I will tell you this. If you were listening earlier and we talked about what we did with last year's budget, um, using March 1 numbers after we did cuts to agencies, tried to start this budget year with that same number. Of course, the administration came kicking and screaming, disagreeing with that. Um, if, if we had implemented that and we did it March 1, they lived with less money from March until till June 30th last year. Nobody lost a job. No department was closed. We didn't close a university. We didn't close a hospital. Even if we did this $200 million that we were talking about this last special session, that's 2% of the state general fund. If there's not a department that can live without 2% of their money over a 12-month period, something's wrong with the management of that agency. So when I talk to business people, look, I'm, I'm a banker, sit in New Iberia and talk to clients all day long. Um, when, 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 when they're looking at the potential of an incremental increase in a tax where husband and wife are not taking payroll so that they can pay their two employees they have yep. left, yep. that is real to our folks. So I, I hear you, and, and I'm telling you this is our effort um, to to stand and try and change the conversation that it's not about revenue, it's about how we spend our money and where we spend it. Yeah, but to your point, no one's lost a job in Louisiana yet, uh, in Louisiana state government yet. Yeah, good point. All right, Taylor Barrett, let's take a break. 844-766-6607. Hickson has a hotline. If you want to make a quick comment or, or ask the uh, speaker a question, we will allow it. I got a couple more myself. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Moon Reform Show. Hi, y'all. Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show. Great to have you with us. And we do appreciate uh, Taylor Barrod, his leadership and real leadership in Baton Rouge. Leadership that was working perfectly. And then, uh, you know, it just didn't work out at the end, but uh, it's not because of the leadership of Mr. Barrod. And no matter what you read in a Jim Beam or Tyler Bridges article, or Lanny <laughs> Keller, or Stephanie Grace, they don't even they don't even try. To uh, to do it right, and, and it's all about Bill Edwards being reelected. In my opinion, not yours. One one more, uh, we take some more calls, but let's get one. I got a question. Uh, Paul and Nacketis, go, Paul. Yeah, real quick. I, I'm trying to figure out when we're going to have some party discipline in the Republican Party. I think the battles are lost when you do your committee appointments, and I notice that there's never three or four Democrats siding with all the Republicans on a committee to cut spending and stuff. So when are we going to get these people off these committees? that are the traitors that get this stuff out of ways and means. And I noticed we couldn't even get a bill out of a committee to do away with sanctuary cities, even though the Republican Party controls both sides of the House and the Senate. So when are we going to get some party discipline on these Republicans on these committees? Because I know y'all are in charge of who, who gets on there. 
them. Yes, I, and there's a well, lot of people. I, I'm kind of feel that way, but I'm not a Republican. Yeah, and and <laughs> and there there are uh, you know as we have our 16 seated committees, and and as I named the the chairman and vice chairman when I got elected last January, um, you know when 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 you're a- attempting to be as as partisan. Um, as you can to make a statement and at the same time trying to be bipartisan to keep the flow of the body. Um, you know, as a Republican speaker, I, I certainly have a, a strong lean to the Republican side. Um, but as a leader of the body, I, I, you know, I do have three independents and, and, um, 40 Democrats that are part of the body as well. So, you know, from a diplomacy perspective, I mean, a, a lot of states make, you know, Republicans um, chairman throughout, you know, I mean, there's not a not a Democrat when you're in majority. Let me stop you one time. I, I, I think we're too nice. I'm not saying you. I'm right. saying in general because uh, if I look on the other side, Alario, he put people on committees that he knew he could control. Correct. He, he, Correct. And, and matter of fact, I think Neil Raza does a Judiciary Committee, but he loaded it up with Democrats, and so Correct. they get hurt. Now, I think that's why people get a little frustrated because they're saying, well, they're doing it to us. We ought to do it to them. Well, and, and I will tell you this. On subject matter, particularly on the two money committees, yes, I mean, sir. we are Republican lopsided on solid, appropriations. Solid service, yeah. um, and the same on, on ways and means. Now, some of those votes don't always come out that way. Um, if you have a Republican or two, in some cases, the Republican may be handling the bill in some cases, um, that those votes tend to be a little bit closer. When when we need to control the vote, we have the opportunity okay. to do that, which is why I have those chairmen in place. Okay, uh, special session looks like the sand will be called in January, February. I heard I heard Bill Edwards uh, make the comment. I'm not calling a special session. That's a bunch of bunk. He is. Uh, talk a little bit about that. What's going to happen? The one cent sales tax is floating out there. It's going off the books uh, July 1st of next year. What do you think needs to happen? What would you like to see? Because nobody wants y'all to vote for more taxes except the newspapers and the left. Correct. Well, and, and I will tell you this. I think where, 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 where we're heading is you have a couple of things that need to um, work through uh, the process. We will have another REC meeting late in the year or beginning of next year um, to look at, look at adjustments unless there's something catastrophic before then. Um, and then that, that preempts the executive budget that will be due to the legislature the last week of January. Yes, so, uh, you know, how the governor dis- decides if he chooses to call a special session, is it right before he presents the executive budget or right after? The executive budget is going to be minus a billion dollars. So it'll be presented with everybody's hair on fire, no doubt, that, you know, the the, the budget's short, $1.2 billion, and we need to fix that. So, I, I mean, no doubt that that will be how it's propped up. Um, what, what we were shooting for, and that's the, 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 the biggest disappointment for us leaving these sessions is that we had the opportunity to cut that fiscal cliff in half? Had we controlled the spending and had we had the support working through that, ninety-seven point five percent, you would have, you would have had it halfway cut already. Correct. So when you're looking at you know six or seven hundred million as compared to one point two or one point three billion, that's an easier number to solve. You bring up the one cent sales tax. It was estimated last year when we when when it was passed as a temporary measure that annually it would generate about $800 million. It is clipping currently at about a billion. Looks like it could finish at a billion so one. a lot more than what Absolutely. they said. Absolutely. Not surprising. So, so when you, when you, when you apply that, let's say to the end of the year, I mean, you would, to keep the whole penny, you would be still collecting a billion dollars, let's say. Uh, you know, cut that back half. Make it four and a half cents rather than five cents. Um, you, you allow people to pay less sales tax. You haven't killed anybody. You have an opportunity to finish that fiscal cliff without introducing a new tax. Now, although this was temporary, you have the opportunity to pull it back. When you're facing a $1.2 billion deficit, even if you do that, you're still a ways off for closing the cliff. You know, the cuts, in my opinion, they should have taken this $100 million or $200 million in cuts and run with it. Because you know, this going to be uglier come that, January. That, that's what blows my mind. The Republicans did all the negotiating. You had a plan to cut it in half. No, 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 no. We want it all. Now you come back and say, if we do that, we cut the sales tax a half cent, and we're pretty close to what we need to do. And no, 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 we can't do that because I predict they want even more taxes because they did not even go. And I'm almost wondering now if they want mid-year budget cuts to keep proposing tax increases as our salvation. Yeah, and I'm my, starting to wonder now. Yeah, and, and my estimate will be that, that we will get the executive budget presented and possibly have a special session immediately after because then you have the doom and gloom that you can talk about for several weeks. Well, y'all going to be beat up again. It's not even funny. Let's go to uh, Dwayne in New Iberia. Question or comment for Speaker of the House, Taylor Barra. 
Good morning, guys. I wanted to thank uh, Speaker Byron. I'm one of his constituents for standing tough on this uh, no tax issue. But I'm in agreement with that caller earlier. The state needs to cut its budget just like every other business has. If y'all don't start doing some attrition to retirements and not replacing people and cutting our spending, you just they just drive us to the fiscal cliff, and you've got to find a way to get the message out there. The press keeps lying. I don't know how they can get away with it. I know there's freedom of press, but there's also obligation to tell the truth. So I don't know how you can put forward to get that done, but we need some changes because most people in the state see what's going on, but we can't seem to get things corrected. Okay, uh, thanks for the call. No, uh, uh, a lot of I think a lot of that's the sentiment y'all been hearing. The press doesn't hear that. Bill Edwards don't want to hear that. Alario doesn't want to hear that. But the people, are, the reason y'all taking the stand that y'all did is because this is what constituents are telling y'all. Absolutely, and and I mean, look, we have. Through, through all of his proposals earlier in the session with his gross receipts tax and his cat tax and all those ideas. I mean, I had people calling me saying, look, y'all pass that cat tax and I'm going to put you the keys to my business in the mail because I'll be done. Um, it, it is, it is unfortunate that, that you can, you can be so tone deaf to an economic recession that Louisiana has been through for the last three years. I mean, it, economically feasible to do what you label tax reform, whether you think it's tax reform or not, it's not. Their, their definition of tax reform is raising a billion dollars. That, first of all, not reform. Second of all, you can't, you can't tackle that in a, in an economically depressed time. And, and, and you know, and you, now there's talk that the recession is over. I know two engineers that lost their job Monday. You no, know? They, they, they said it's over, but we have no growth. Then it's Absolutely. Not over. And by Absolutely. the way, you're in the banking business. You see it from the different perspectives of real people walking in. Correct. Who can't pay their bill. Taylor, it's, it's been a pleasure. I think y'all did a heck of a job. It's uh, ungodly what the press is trying to do to you and the leadership. It's not right, but our people see it. A lot of people see it. I'm worried about the Baton Rouge area because they're getting, they're getting hand-fed a bunch of baloney. And see us, we like to eat Buddha. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Sir. Look, thanks for Acadiana's support, Moon. Thank you for your support. The conversation will not change. We're on a mission, and we're we're not giving up. Well, we're gonna stand with y'all. All righty, folks. Let's go take a break. More to come. By the way, keep Pelosi should be our motto, right? I think the Republicans need her. We take a break. Be right back.